Greetings, Mind Crafters, and welcome to another Minecraft episode on this gift of a day. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm here with little Giovanni. He's taking a schnooze under the table on this wonderful summer day in the afternoon. It just says siesta to him, I think. And uh, so what I want to talk about today is, you know, we are definitely clutter junkies in this country. And um, maybe even acquired more things during the, you know, during the the pandemic with all the Amazon, you know, buying we did, uh, or maybe not, maybe it was also time to get rid of stuff. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's our nature in general. It's, it's, it's the, the nature of many of us to just not keep tabs on that stuff. You know, we just keep bringing it in, bringing it in, just not paying attention, not noticing. And uh, so it's, it's a great rule. And summer is a great time to try most things, not everything, obviously. But, you know, the days are longer. We've been talking about it beautiful weather and um you know the fresh veggies are in season you know we're, we're using the grill playing little soccer in the backyard or bocce ball or something like that and uh it's, it's just a really good time just to to kind of get rid of stuff and give it away you know make piles give it away throw it away so 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 buy something new let something go bring one thing in let one thing go so we were i was recently at my St. Mike's College reunion, which I had an absolute blast. It was just uh, two weeks ago. And I actually got on a topic. It wasn't me who was brought it up, though, come to think of it. It was a good friend of mine who I haven't seen in a long time. And he has since downsized. He's an early retirement person. We're only in our late 50s. And he uh, has been retired for military. So good for you. You know, fantastic. And um, and so he's the, he and his wife are having a grand time. And they're doing like some small business stuff, like just to, because they're both smart and, and creative and stuff like that. But mostly they're pretty much, their time's their own. So they they're t- they take this little itty bitty pole camper around the country and, and all over the place, I think up into Canada too. And we had this talk and he's so happy. He just seems so content. And we had this less is more discussion and he's actually living it. So they sold their house. They just got rid of a lot. And they spend a ton of time, and and he showed me a picture of it. It's small, and they just keep it very, very neat, very feng shui, and they're loving life, uh, traveling around doing that. But so that led into the discussion of even we are in no way ready to. We both love we both love what are doing what we're doing. We're not in any ready you know any kind of shape to do that. But my friends start talking about just even in your in your house, just like get rid of basically anything that doesn't have a purpose doesn't bring you joy really and so this is something lots of people talk about and i'm forgetting the woman's name was very well known her name starts with an m anyway she's talked about this for a long time and uh you know richard carlson i've been on a jag with him too lately he, he's been talking about it too and, and richard carlson phd author of don't sweat the small stuff series he says that this ration, the rationale for this concept of buy something new, let something go, um, is derived from the almost universal tendency to fill our homes to the brim. This seems to be an issue for people regardless of income, the size of their home, geographic location, race, or religion. The problem is that overcrowding can create a great deal of stress and frustration in terms of knowing where to put things and where to find them. You know, I have to tell you, this is true, and I am a thrower, but I'm married to Ratatouille, and I love him dearly. He, he likes to keep everything. So I'm constantly <laughs> trying to have balance with that, but it's also a time issue. You know, when you're both going full tilt, it can feel like Mount Everest to take on one room if it's, you know, um, you know, gotten gotten cluttered. So I get that. And then if Richard Carlson, PhD, says feeling closed in can also have a negative impact on your psyche making it easier to feel stressed and irritable. That is so true. So one big thing there is that it's um, easy. You know, when we clean up a a, a room or, or a car or something too, the mental benefits, in addition to just having the space, just it, for me, my mental health is, it can, can, I work hard at not letting it as much as I, as possible, but it, it I just feel tr- like, I can't breathe or something. I don't know, but it affects me, it affects me mentally. And then when it's, and then when everything's all open and free, I feel better. And I remember also way back in St. Mike's, if I had, you know, like 95 tests coming and 46 papers, rather than take all that on, I go clean my car. 
because uh, it felt like a sense of control. When I felt out of control, it gave me a sense of control. And so we can really gain so, some autonomy. It's a stress reducer. It feels better once the clutter's gone, stress-wise anyway, but the actual act of getting rid of stuff is stress reducing because it brings a sense of closure. When there's a sense of closure, there's a release of dopamine, which makes us feel good, which is why when we finish a paper or a project at work or, or, or whatever, we feel good about it. It's also something Adderall does for those of us in the Fast Mind Club who happen to be procrastinators. That's the only symptom I don't have. But for those who, who are procrastinators, you know, our dopamine deprived brains don't get that closure fix as easily. So Adderall also does that. It can help fast minders with procrastination. So Richard goes on to say that the truth is most people fill up their existing storage space to its absolute capacity. Why do we do that? It's kind of this unconscious thing. I, I'm just saying that. So if you have two closets in your apartment, each of them is undoubtedly full. If you have three, they're probably full as well. Regardless of how much storage space any of us has, we seem to find a way to fill it. And of course, this would be okay if we never again bought or received a single you know, new item that takes up space. But alas, this is surely not the case. Most of us are constantly taking in new and used items on a consistent basis. The question is, where do we put it all? What most of us do is rearrange existing stuff. I definitely do that. Right right now, actually, as we speak, which is what I'm doing this, doing this episode, so I'm staying in alignment with what I'm saying because I'm not a do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do person. Our bedroom, which is usually good, and not lately because we've, you know, we've been going full tilt, I have like these little piles on either side of our dresser that just need to be gone through and, and go. And So I'm going to start small probably this evening um, and, and add, take a bit of my own advice here because I'll feel so much so much better. So Richard, you know, so rather than get rid of things, we, we try to reorganize. I, we move piles around like it's, it's like manana. I'll do it later. You know, we just don't seem to want to take the time to sort through stuff, throw stuff away. Giving stuff away even takes longer, right? Because you got to find somewhere to give it and package it all up and bring it there, blah, 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 blah. And that all seems like so much of a chore that I think that's many, even if we're not consciously thinking all of this stuff, that's what's happening and so it doesn't get taken there and we become we join the uh, club you know ratatouille of the pack rats oh i'm totally remembering what my what my friend and i how we got to this conversation now we were sitting outside the saint mike's bookstore and he bought a new sweatshirt that's where it started from he's like no i'm gonna have to get rid of one i said what he said i just bought this new swag and now when I go home, because we've feng shui, and he told me, I think his wife has two shelves or, or two dresser drawers, or I forget which exactly, and he has one, and they've really worked hard to get rid of, you know, a lot. They're very, living a very minimalist life. He said, since I have this new thing, I'm going to get rid of the old thing. And that's how we get, got into this conversation of, and he went on and on about, um, you have no idea what this will do for you mentally. I mean, it's amazing. And and uh, he said, I can't even tell you. It's easier to clean. It takes far less time. It, we don't. They don't spend a. You know, um, it didn't sound like to spend much time cleaning. Obviously, scrub a dub a cleaning is different than picking up. I guess they're two different things. But if you don't have much stuff, there's not much to pick up and organize, right? So, so really, the solution to this after you do that initial feng shui sweep, which really, at least for me. Like I said, I'm going to deal with those piles today because I feel like I need to having this podcast talk. And plus, I know I'll feel I'll feel better to to do steps because if you, just like writing, you know, chapters in a book, we've had that talk before. If you think you're going to save a whole Saturday and get like half the book written, probably not going to happen. Maybe you'll get lucky and that'll happen, um, but probably not. So it's best to just plan to write something and, and make some progress. And so, shoot, see if you start with a sock drawer. Um, and so you get to a place where where the room or the closet is 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 completely feng shui. The next thing is to make a promise, a promise to yourself. And if you've got a partner, um, or you've got you know kids old enough to understand, teenagers, young adults, um, or you've got a roommate, or you know whatever, somebody that they're able to get it though, you may you just you make a mutual decision and then swear by it, a, a vow, a promise. To each new item, unless you want to just do clothes, but probably items is better because it covers the whole thing. 
you, know, you, you break, you know, you bring in a new wine glass, you get rid of another one. You know, if it's sweatshirts like my friend or knickknacks or whatever, one comes in, one goes out, and that's it. And then after you feng shui, it should really stick as long as you adhere to your promise. And so that's it. That is it. Buy one new thing, let one go. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the gorgeous northern Vermont on a beautiful summer day. Have a mindful, mindful, mindful day.